All right, and we are back again. This time we are looking at series parallel circuits with multiple components out in a parallel branch. And um, what we're going to do is look at what happens when one of the two components is faulted. So we're going to start with opens, and for this exercise we are going to open R4, and you see that appearing on the screen. Now, we can see from that that um, if R4 is open, we are going to lose the path of current through that second branch. And so now our series parallel becomes a series circuit with only the three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, that are functioning. All right, let's look what's happening with resistance. So originally, um, I put up there, this is a different circuit than the one we previously used, so you're not familiar with the total um, calculations if the circuit was working correctly. If you want to go ahead and do those for yourself, feel free. I put them up on the screen for you. So if those, those numbers are if everything is working properly. So of course it's not, and that's not going to be the numbers. So we look now at our new numbers, and um, now that we just have a series circuit, we're just gonna add all of those together. So we add um, R1, R2, and R3's values together, and we get a total resistance of 15 K ohms. Now, we see that total resistance is going up. It was 13.33 K, and now it's 15 K ohms. So if total resistance is going up, let's take a look at Ohm's Law Arrow Theory. So if my voltage applied remains the same and my resistance goes up, current we would expect to go down. So let's take a look at total current. And total current, that was the original number with 13.33 um, K ohms applied to the circuit. So of course we don't have that anymore. We now have 15 K ohms. So we'll do our new math calculations, 50 divided by 15 K, and we get a new current of 3.33 milli, which is indeed smaller than our original current of 3.75 milliamps. All right, once we've finished with total resistance and total current, we're going to look out at voltages. So let's start with R1. It was three. It was 9.38 volts, and of course it's not anymore. Now it has its ohmic value of 2.5K multiplied by 3.33 milli, which is our new current, and we get 8.33 volts. And R2 we look at, it originally had 28.13 volts, and now with its resistance of 7.5 K ohms multiplied by 3.33 milli, we get 24.98 volts. All right, finally we look at R3. R3 did have 12.49 volts that was applied to the parallel, so that's, since it's the only component on that branch, it saw the entirety of the parallel voltage. Now without the parallel, we have a change. We have its total ohmic value of 5K multiplied by 3.33 milliamps, which is total current, and we get 16.65 volts. So there's a couple things I want to talk about now that's important when you're looking at multiple components in series parallel circuits. So the big thing to think about is what is happening with our component voltage drops when we see these kinds of faults. And you will notice that our series resistors, whose ohmic value did not change, followed total current. So their voltage drops went down, just like total current did. Now, R3, while it does see um, a different current than it did originally, the real interest in that is that the total ohmic value for my parallel branch went from 3.33 K ohms to 5 K ohms, so it went up considerably. And you will find in um, electronic circuits that when ohmic values increase like that, like considerably increase, you will see voltage drops rise on those components even when current goes down. And you're going to continue to see this when we get out into um, uh, resistive inductive circuits and resistive capacitive circuits. So, um, of course, our voltage drop on R3 went up. And a good way to think about that is when you think about um, current, current is very small. 
Um, so it makes a very small impact, whereas resistance is typically much larger. And so when you see changes in resistance, you usually see much larger number changes than when you see than those that you see in current. So just a good rule of thumb, um, if we were to look out at what's going on with our non-conducting parallel branch, if I were to take my um, voltage drop from the top of R4 to the bottom of R5, I read, read exactly what I read on R3, which was 16.65 volts. However, if I were to read only across R4, in other words, I put my black lead on the bottom of R4 and my red lead on the top of R4, I would read my applied voltage because that is where my open is at. So I would see 16.65 volts. If I were to put my black lead at the bottom of R5 and my red lead at the top of R5, I would read zero because there's no difference of potential there. Um, as there's no current flow, there's no difference of potential, and you're reading all on the one side of your battery, just like we've discussed in previous circuits. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, we're going to look at shorts in a multi-component series parallel next.